nine things you need to know about brew. Do we like brew? Yes, until it breaks. Do we need brew? It's almost the only game in town unless you're going to do something weird like learn Nyx. Does the creator of brew even like brew? Well, he seems to think it's stale. Did the creator of brew go all in on a crypto startup to help open source contributors get paid after making the number one dev tool for macOS without figuring out how to get paid? Kind of seems like it. Anyway, here are those nine things. The very first thing you might ask yourself about Brew is, where the hell is everything? If you run Brew prefix, it's going to give you the directory where it installs stuff. Now, I'm in an Intel iMac, which means my stuff is in user local. If you're in a silicone Mac, it's probably in Opt Homebrew. But the nice part about uh, what Brew does for its setup is that it kind of creates this Linux -y environment inside of its prefix directory, inside of the directory where it installs stuff. So there's an Etsy directory, there's a var directory, there's a bin directory, all this stuff that is just like the root directory of a real Linux server is in your brew directory. So it'll be familiar to you if you're familiar with Linux stuff. So for example, all your configuration for PHP or whatever might be in your uh, homebrew directory inside of Etsy. All right, next fun thing. If you install services with Brew, such as uh, Nginx or PHPFVM, anything like that, Brew has this uh, thing called services, Brew services. So I can Brew services list. I can do Brew services start and stop, all that good stuff. It will start and stop services that it sets up that you've installed with Brew. And behind the scenes is using um, like launch CTL on macOS or system CTL on Linux, all that good stuff. So it is just like a um, process manager that macOS or Linux uses, but you get it through Brew also for the stuff you install using Brew. Okay, next fun thing is this thing called a Brew file. So just like uh, your, what, gems in Ruby and your composer file in PHP, all that good stuff that lists dependencies, you can have Brew dependencies. So if you need some Brew package for a uh, thing that you're developing, an application, uh, an open source thing, whatever, you can create a brew file to find the things that you need installed through brew here. And then you just run the brew bundle command and that will automatically install the bundle toolkit for brew and it'll install the stuff defined by your brew file. Pretty neat. Okay, next up, installing and updating stuff with Brew. If you've ever done Brew install, you know, whatever, and all of a sudden it's installing and updating everything else you've ever installed with Brew, there's a way to stop that. If you do Brew install dash H, there is some documentation up here. Yes, read the documentation. And it will have a bunch of environment variables you can set to tell Brew not to run all that stuff. So what I've done is I've created a command called qbrew. qbrew is quiet brew. And if I just do uh, which qbrew, We'll see it's just an alias. This alias I've defined as a function inside of my .zshrc file. In fact, let's look at that, zshrc. I have a function called qbrew, and it just runs brew, passing any arguments we pass it, but it sets those environment variables. So if I do qbrew install tmux or something, I already have this installed, but if I didn't, it would go ahead and install tmux without doing all this extra work of updating every single thing I've ever installed using brew, right? It saves a lot of time. Now, you might actually want Brew to update stuff occasionally, so you don't want to use QBrew all the time. But another trick is to use Homebrew Auto Update, which will, every 24 hours by default, run Brew Update for you in the background so you don't hit that issue yourself when you're trying to install something and move on with your life. Okay, the next thing, if you've ever hit issues with Brew, you can just run Brew Doctor, and Brew Doctor will try to find issues with your Brew setup and let you know if there's an issue. It's going to come up with something for me in just a second. Okay, so it, you have installed formulas that are deprecated, so get rid of these maybe because they're old. And also Homebrew's sbin is not found in my path, and it has stuff in user local sbin that I've installed, so I might want to set that in my path variable to make that work correctly, right? So if you're running into issues with Brew, you might want to run Brew Doctor and see if it has a fix for you. Now, this brings me to the next thing, which is also about fixing an issue with Brew. If you run into permission issues with Brew, typically this is because you've run some command with Brew with sudo, probably because of some other random issue, and you just wanted it to just work, right? But this now makes files owned as user roots on your computer instead of your user. So the fix is to run chown, right? To change ownership of the Brew files to your current macOS user. And this also combines our Brew prefix trick in order to uh, set the correct directory, the set the correct files to your owner, right? So uh, my files, let's see, I'm gonna cd into the result of brew prefix, 
and that's going to be in user local for my case. And all of these files in here should be owned by user for developer and group staff, right? AWS CLI has different opinions. That's okay. That's not installed through brew. These are all set in my case. Have you ever wanted to install stuff automatically from the Mac App Store without having to go into the Mac App Store, right? This is really good for automating your Mac OS setup. You can grab brew Moss, which is the installation of Moss CLI, and that will let you install stuff from the Mac App Store over the command line, right? So you just run uh, like brew Moss or Moss list, and you can download all of these applications through some really random ID number. So uh, you can read the docs here to figure out how to find the ID number of the applications. They are unique per application, so uh, you don't have to worry about like forgetting them. You just kind of put them in a document somewhere so you know, and then you can run Moss install, you know, some ID number and install stuff in the Mac OS store. Next trick, brew unlink. What does this do? Well, brew sets up sim links to stuff, right? So if I say which Tmux, Tmux is in user local bin, but if I list that out, user local bin, and I'll grep for Tmux, that's a sim link to the stuff in seller, which is the things that uh, Brew has installed for us. If I do Brew unlink Tmux, it will disable that sim link. And then if I have Tmux installed like in my system elsewhere, it'll use that Tmux instead of this Tmux, right? So if you want to get rid of the one that brew has installed, you just do brew unlink. It's also handy for switching versions of things. So I could just say like brew unlink PHP at 8.2 and then brew link, the opposite of unlink, PHP at 8.3. So I can use PHP 8.3 or switch between 8.2 and 8.3, that kind of thing. Pretty handy. Okay, the last true brew trick I have here is the brew edit command. This is kind of neat because once you learn what a brew package is, you can go ahead and monkey with it. You can change it. You can edit it. So if I do brew edit tmux, we're going to see the Ruby class, because it's all written in Ruby, the uh, formula that it uses to install brew. And you can actually edit this and play with this or learn from it if you're making your own brew stuff as well. So go ahead and check that out if you want and just kind of see how tmux or whatever you want gets set up and installed through uh, brew. Okay, the last thing is a bonus thing. This is thing number 10. I said nine. Um, this isn't really a brew trick, but remember that crypto startup by the guy who created brew? That is, uh, let's see, t.xyz. t.xyz, you know, who cares? But part of t.xyz, uh, through that application, through that um, app or business, whatever you want to call it, came this thing called package, uh, pkgx.dev. So package x, I don't know, whatever. This is a neat way to install stuff. Also, it uses Nix, uh, the Nix package manager. And the way Nix works is, honestly, I have no idea. But what it does is it installs everything onto your system in a way that it doesn't pollute your system files. It, it installs everything in its own location, all the dependencies are its own little location. So you can blow it away. You can use different versions of different stuff for different projects, all that good stuff. So if I do, uh, let's see, package uh, at PHP at 8.3 and just want it to run the version, it's going to install and run PHP 8.3. And it's going to install all that stuff inside of the .pkgz directory. And let's see, I totally did that wrong. I need to list out the stuff in that directory. And it's still the wrong thing because it's X, not Z, eh, whatever. Okay, so uh, this installed PHP into this directory and all the stuff that comes with PHP, which is actually kind of a lot of stuff. Uh, so do dash h um, the directory dot p k g uh, x and it's 1.3 gigabytes of stuff and all I did is install PHP 8.3 because it has all the dependencies for PHP and all that stuff in there. So it's great for not polluting your system. It's great for running multiple versions of stuff. It's not great for eating up your disk drive depending on what you're installing and writing, right? So something like Golang would be a lot less uh, stuff because there's a lot less system dependencies that Golang uses to you know make a make an application. Okay, and that's it. That is the nine things you need to know about Brew, plus one extra bonus thing that you might want to try out.